All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I'm excited to have Tracy in score with me today. Uh, Tracy is an attorney and a holistic practitioner. Um, and we're going to talk to you today about something. You know, I'll stop. Let me start that again. See, that's what happens. Taking it from the top. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Monday Morning Mojo. It's me, Anna Gibbs, and I am joined today by a special guest. I'm really excited to get into this topic with you. Her name is Tracy Inscore. She is an attorney who is also a holistic practitioner, and um, we're excited to share some things with you today that I think will help you create some balance and also uh, really address what burnout can do in your lives. And Tracy has uh, some personal experience that she may share with you about burnout and what's motivated her to now help other attorneys uh, through something known as emotional freedom technique or EFT, also commonly known as tapping. So we're going to unpack all of that for you today. And uh, I'm just going to welcome Tracy in and thank you for joining me. And I'm sure as we get talking, you can share a little bit more about you and your story. So hi, Tracy. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so yeah, I, I want to jump right into, um, and then we'll circle back a little bit to your journey as an attorney and why you're so passionate about helping other attorneys through your holistic practice. But I know that there's someone listening right now who's, sa who's saying, emotional what? EF what? So <laughs> let's just go there, if we could, and talk about um, what EFT is. Sure. So emotional freedom techniques, EFT or tapping um, involves just like the in the name tapping on certain meridian points in a specific sequence while we focus on a, a particular emotion, a memory or a problem. And so it's based in traditional Chinese medicine, and it really centers around the core premise that everything is energy that all negative emotion is caused by energy blockages within the body. And, you know, we're vibrational beings and every emotion and experience carries a certain vibration or frequency. And we're basically like sponges. And, you know, you may have heard the sayings, um, our issues are stored in our tissues or our biography becomes our biology, right? The body keeps the score. And, and our body is a living, breathing record of everything we've ever experienced. And sometimes just like, um, you know, a vinyl record gets scratched and then it um, won't play properly anymore. It jumps and skips. Our emotional experiences can do the same thing within our body. And so we find ourselves being triggered by things, feeling that emotional charge or having a physical reaction even when we think about a past event. So the meridian system is like, like an energetic highway flowing through the body and tapping allows us to restore the proper flow um, of our life force energy or our chi through those meridians. And there's 12 main meridians. Um, each one is believed to correspond to a specific part of the body. Um, and, but when our, when there's any sort of blockage, that's when physical ailments and illnesses and emotional uh, issues start to happen. And so traditional Chinese medicine and the practice of acupuncture were actually way ahead of their time thousands of years ago in identifying the meridian system, um, which basically corresponds to the nervous system as we know and understand it in, in you know, modern Western medicine. So most of us are familiar with that meridian system because of acupuncture, mm -hmm. where you, you, know, you place needles along certain points of those meridians um, to get any stuck energy flowing again. So the founder of EFT uh, was a man named Gary Craig. He discovered that for certain meridian points on the head and the upper torso uh, that are uniquely connected to emotions, uh, that you can just tap or apply light fingertip pressure on those points in a specific sequence. We can essentially get the same result as acupuncture, but with without needles. So, so that's interesting because I know there are some people who, um, you know, just feel adverse to that because it, it is with needles or they may not understand it. So, um, 
I didn't real I did not realize that this is something that could replace acupuncture. And does it bring the same effects? It does. Um, yeah. The other benefit is you don't have to go anywhere to do this. Obviously, you you're probably your own. <laughs> yeah. You're probably not going to do acupuncture on on yourself. You have no. to go. Yeah. <laughs> do not go. recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do not recommend. You know, you have to go see a practitioner um, with EFT. First of all, it is a self-healing technique. And I really want to emphasize that the main part of what I do is teaching people how to do this technique properly so that they can do this on their own anytime they need it. You know, yes, sessions with a practitioner such as myself are, are hugely beneficial, but this is meant to be done on your own regular you to have your own regular practice with it and um so i think it's just really cool that you can do this anytime in, anywhere that you need it yeah that that was one of the reasons why i was excited to have you come on uh, monday morning mojo because i think our audience is probably made up of mostly entrepreneurs or people who are you know drivers in a business and um goes without saying that, you know, are probably, you know, working on big picture uh, goals and opportunities, um, you know, not to say that, you know, there aren't other people listening who are in professions, just like, you know, teachers or, or even focusing on a business within a home, right? But at the end of the day, what I'm getting at is we're all living very busy, full lives. And um, we can be, we can be sort of on an autopilot until, we feel like we hit the brick wall or feel that, um, as we said in, in your intro, burnout starts showing up. Um, so it sounds like, you know, EFT is a technique. I, I've, I've used EFT a few times, and I feel like that is a technique that becomes a pattern interrupt, mm -hmm. right? It, start, it sort of helps you to, you know, recalibrate in a word um, and, and empower you to move out of that feeling of overwhelm. Would you agree with that? Yes, and it has actually been clinically proven effective in treating anxiety and mm -hmm. PTSD. And so when we tap, it actually sends calming signals to the amygdala in the brain, which helps um, turn off that chronic fight or flight state that so many of us find our, ourselves in, calms our nervous system, helps us access our prefrontal cortex in the brain, which is huge. That's where our creative problem solving is. And it actually helps us to create new neural pathways relative to certain memories or events, um, which really increases our resilience long-term. So mm -hmm. if you have a regular tapping practice, not only does it help take the edge off in the moment with that acute stress, but you will find yourself just better able to withstand sort of the daily stressors and pressures of life. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's important, you know, our mission on, on Mojo is to just help people look at the whole picture, all the aspects of our lives, and we can't ignore our health or our mental health. And, um, you know, as I said in your intro, you're an attorney, um, and I know you're in California, you specialize in land use, is that right? Yeah, land use, environmental, real estate. So it's interesting, because now you also help people with the environment of their body, Right, exactly. mind body connection as well. So, what brought you here? What tell us a little bit about your journey? Sure. So, to to back all the way up, um, growing up in the eighties and nineties, my parent, my family was part of a very high control religious group, um, very fear based, a ton of rules around what we were allowed to do. Um, my dad had a bad temper. There was a lot of, of yelling. And I, I say that because I realized how much that contributed to my nervous system just being completely out of whack. Sure. There's just a lot of kind of walking on eggshells. I was an only child, so I had to navigate that all by myself. But I learned that academic achievement and performing were ways to make sure that no one was angry with me. It gave me a sense of control. It gave me a way to get my needs met. And then that was reinforced with a lot of praise and, re and reward. I was a great student. So my entire sense of self-worth and value really became tied to performing, achieving, doing, helping, rescuing, fixing, being the best, right? 
and it set the perfect, it was like the perfect storm to set the stage for burnout later in life. So I like to think of burnout as kind of a fire. It's like that flame was already smolder smoldering within me from a, a very early age. And then going to law school in my law career was just like pouring gasoline on that fire. Um, so my, my parents divorced when I was 14. I hated high school. I actually tested out when I was 15 and started uh, working full time and taking college classes. So in a way, I've just kind of felt like I've been on my own um, emotionally and, and both just sort of in the world from a very young age. Wow. And then going to law school just kind of seemed like the next logical step of doing hard things and, and having to constantly prove my worth and value. And after I graduated, you know, I was a star associate. I was representing one of the largest companies in the world, doing really, really well on the outside. But inside, uh, I was miserable. I was self-medicating with alcohol, binge drinking every weekend, um, severely depressed. I had chronic unexplained uh, neck pain. I was sick all the time. And, you know, and I struggled with imposter syndrome to some degree anyway. Mm. But then the fact that there was such a huge disconnect between my inner world and my outer world just really intensified that feeling of being impo an imposter. I felt like a fraud because if people only knew how much I was struggling, like, gosh, they wouldn't trust me with any of this stuff. And so about 10 years ago, I left full-time practice. Uh, I continued to practice part-time and I still do. I also went in-house for a time. I did editing work. I was a professor at a few different colleges and law schools. I was even a fitness instructor all things that I really enjoyed. And I managed to burn out doing all of those fun things too, all the mm. things that lawyers dream about doing when they leave full-time practice, because it is really never about the job or what you're doing, right? It's the It was the energy that I brought to each of those roles. You know, and can I'll we just pause right there? Because what you just said, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that is really very powerful because I think that some people associate burnout with doing things or, or toxicity or doing things that they don't enjoy or feeling stuck. And you just said something that I think is important for everyone to kind of sit with for a minute is that you can be doing things you love and you can be living your version of your best life and still get to burn out because it's it's about managing the energy that you're putting into something and what you're putting out and and also what you're allowing in right because energy is always moving so um I, i'd love for you to jump off from there because i think that is important for people someone needed to hear that today Thank you so much for, yeah, for reflecting that and, and restating that. Um, Maybe it was me that needed to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know, but that is so true because not only, first of all, I was trying to do all those things at the same time. Mm. I had like six part-time gigs going on. Right. Um, I felt responsible for other people's experiences. I felt Ooh. like I had to be perfect. I, I just like received I, that one, feeling <laughs> responsible for other people's experiences. Yeah. You can't be. Feeling like I could never say no to anyone. Right. So any offer that came up, I, I had to say yes. Um, and you know what? A part of me liked it. My ego really thrived on being in demand and, and being the go-to person. And it gave me a sense of control because if I could be that needed, then it felt like I was safe from being rejected or abandoned. Um, but in the process, I completely abandoned myself and I created a life that I just wanted to escape from. Mm. So I went through a um, spiritual awakening for, for lack of a better term and have been on a healing path that is still very much ongoing that has caused me to question everything and really opened my eyes to holistic and alternative healing. So I discovered EFT uh, just really only a couple of years ago. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't try it right away. I like was super resistant to the idea. It seemed way too easy, too good to be true. I dismissed it. 
once I tried it, I was so blown away by the results. And I said, I just need to help this reach as many people as possible. Because in my opinion, it is one of the most underrated um, tools that we have available to us to just fully step into our own power and, um, and overcome burnout. Can anyone do EFT and can anyone benefit from it? Absolutely. So it's, you can't really say this about many, very many things, but it's completely safe and there are no known side effects. Um, obviously, if you have any sort of trauma in your background, I highly encourage you to work with a, a properly trained professional. Um, but as far as it being, it, it is effective on on literally any and every issue. Um, I haven't seen anything that can't benefit or have some improvement. Uh, through through doing EFT. So I know that um, I would assume a majority of our listeners are listening, but we do also offer a uh, recording of this podcast on my um, YouTube channel. So can you demonstrate what it what EFT might look like? Sure. So the first step is just to be as specific as possible uh, for the issue that you want to work on. And again, it could literally be anything. I'll start by guiding the client through three setup statements while we tap on the side of the hand. This is the karate chop point. Mm -hmm. And that's designed to bring down any resistance that, that you may have to the process. That's the part of your hand that runs parallel with your pinky. Yep, yep, that fleshy side part of your hand. I used to, I like to just use all, all four fingers of the opposite hand and just tap tap right there. While we say things like, even though I'm so frustrated with my job right now, I completely love, accept, and forgive myself. Or so something I would just repeat that process. after you if we were in a session together. Exactly. And then, uh, to, you know, practitioners use different points. I then go to the top of the head. I like using the back of the neck um, point, uh, inside corner of the eyebrow, the side of the eye, under the eye under the nose, under the mouth, uh, the collarbone points. I also like to use the thymus point. So just kind of thumping in the middle of your chest, mm -hmm. under the arm, and then back to the side of the hand. Now there's also, um, sometimes I'll use the, the wrist points. There's also a point on the back of the hand that we'll use in coordination with certain eye movements. Uh, really just depends on uh, the client and, and the issues we're working on. And those were those are the meridian points you referred to earlier. Correct. And so um, it sounds like it takes just a few minutes. I mean, in my experience, when I've done it, it's only a few minutes, mm -hmm. right? And do you recommend that this is done daily or is there a certain schedule that you recommend for people? I think daily is a, is a great practice. And again, like you mentioned, it doesn't have to take very long. This isn't an hour. Um, I would say people, people will ask me, well, can I do too much EFT? And I would say, look, if you're, if you're doing an hour a day, let's say you do an hour with a practitioner, it's really important to give your body time to integrate that session. Mm -hmm. That energy is going to continue moving even after you stop tapping. So give yourself some, some time in between so that it can fully, um, you know, integrate and you can feel those benefits. But it, it's completely safe to do as much as you want. And I know you, you have devoted your practice to working with primarily attorneys because, you know, you can relate to what uh, maybe their experiences or their issues are. And as we said, this is really something anyone can do. Um, what do you find are some, some of the, um, some of the things that are going on in an individual's life, um, because I don't believe people um, are, are sitting up at night, losing sleep saying, oh, I need EFT, right? Because they, they probably don't know enough about it to realize that that could be a solution. But what is it that an individual could be struggling with and EFT could be a great solution for them? Yeah, so back home, when I said that, you know, burnout is really never about the job. Mm -hmm. um, and also burnout can happen to, to people, to parents, to caregivers. So it doesn't always have to be, you know, related to a, a job or a career. 
but it's never about the external stressor. I always say that it's a symptom of much deeper issues. So that means that changing jobs or changing industries can give some temporary relief, but that pattern of burnout will find a way to keep showing up in other areas of our life or in that new job until we heal those deeper root cause issues. And some of those deeper root cause issues might be something like living outside of your true purpose or out of alignment with your core values. You know, you, yes. you touched on this in your episode about living a big life where Thank you. it can be, yeah, love that episode. It can be exhausting to be out of alignment with your true purpose and your authentic self because it takes a lot of energy to pretend to be someone that you're not. For sure. To not be using your natural gifts and instead trying to force yourself down another path. Other things can be childhood family dynamics are huge. Past trauma, nervous system dysregulation, um, subconscious blocks, fears, limiting beliefs around money, um, or a belief that we have to struggle and sacrifice in order to be worthy or that it's not allowed to be easy or enjoyable. Uh, societal programming is a big thing that I help um, my clients overcome. And um, we, you know, when you get the mind, the body, the nervous system, and the subconscious mind sort of working all on the same page, you would be amazed at one, what can come up, what issues will kind of surface when they're ready to be healed and you're in a more relaxed state um, and just uh, just how you're better able, better equipped to to address those things. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And, you know, the work we do is very similar, you know, it's just in a different modality, but I, I could see how we could work well together uh, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways too. So we'll probably talk more about that. And, um, you know, you touched on something earlier too, and it just showed up again in, in what you shared. You know, there's that current too that can run through people's thoughts, which is fear. And, um, you know, what does that fear hold us back from? And mm -hmm. so I, I would assume um, that someone who is working with you can probably at times even experience some, you know, overwhelming different emotions because it's almost like when there is a plug in the drain or something blocking water from flowing and then all of a sudden there's that rush, right? So um, have you found that some people uh, in, in working with them have experienced that and the, the shift is powerful? Very powerful shifts to be sure, for sure. And the what, what I love so much about this modality, you know, and this is coming from someone who has tried all the things, right? Yeah. And I've done so much uh, talk therapy, for example. And I love therapy, don't get me wrong. And I'm also not a licensed therapist. So this is not medical advice at all. But if let's say you're working with a therapist and they're not trauma informed, what can actually happen is that by repeating our traumatic events over and over again without a somatic tool, somatic meaning, you know, within the body to help us process that, it can actually just further re-traumatize us. Yes. And so a lot of people avoid fully feeling these big emotions because they're afraid of just spiraling. It's mm -hmm. like, I can't really go there because I have stuff to do today and I can't afford to just completely fall apart. This is too much, too overwhelming. So let me just keep this stuff down it's safe. Of course, it's going to come out in other ways. But what I find that is while you, through tapping, it creates a sense of safety within the body. And I found that things will not surface to be healed until you're ready. And so also um, being a certified practitioner and having learned how to, to deal with, with trauma and to um, avoid re-traumatizing people, it's, it's really a much more gentle process. So I think compared to other things, for example, I tried breath work years ago, great modality, really just wasn't for me. Mm. I found myself almost having a panic attack because that rapid breathing pattern was just too much for me. Um, so this is by far kind of the most, uh, one of the most gentle 
and intuitive uh, modalities that I've used. And how did you discover EFT for yourself? Because I, I believe that's what started. It was something you did for yourself and then you you made a you know a decision along the way to be a practitioner. I actually saw, <laughs> I was watching YouTube and I saw a YouTube video that was uh, by the, the Tapping Solution. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're phenomenal. If you want any free resources, re resources to check That's out. That's where I first found out about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, highly recommend the Tapping Solution. And I remember, I don't remember what I was so upset about, but I thought, well, what the heck? I have nothing to lose. Let me just try this. And when he he got to the part where he said, okay, check in with that emotion. Where is it? And I'm like, oh, it's gone. What what just happened? <laughs> you know, it's um. I will say again, uh, this is uh, this podcast is about helping people move forward, find solutions, ideas, inspirations to live a bigger life, personally, professionally. You know, I call it Monday Morning Mojo, so you can kind of get a a fix for the beginning of the week. Um, and certainly, I'm here to educate, inspire, coach. But, you know, we're not doctors or, or clinical therapists in any way. So I'll put that disclaimer out. But I will say from my own experience, personally and as a practitioner, I have learned over the last several years uh, and really shifted my own mindset to understand that we can we have incredible potential and power to heal ourselves. And we have the ability to do it very quickly in some cases. Uh, and that may not be true for everyone, for everything, but in most cases, um, we can find solutions that open up energetic channels and release some trauma and some negative emotions and feelings of fear very quickly, as you've described what tapping can do. Um, it doesn't take years to fix yourself uh, necessarily. Exactly. And, you know, we can control very little about our job and our outside circumstances. Um, but when we focus within, which is actually where our power is, you know, we can we can control our responses to things. We can control where our boundaries are. We can increase our resilience. We can learn to soothe our own nervous system so that we're no longer walking around in this highly reactive hypervigilant state of fight or flight. And you're absolutely right that it does not have to be this long, tedious process. Um, I believe that our bodies were uh, brilliantly created to be self-healing. Yes. And um, we instinctively know. And I think of these meridian points as sort of like these these really cool control switches that we have, sort of like emergency, like a panic button <laughs> built in where uh, we can really take our, our own power back. Yeah. And so you work with your clients mostly on Zoom, I believe. Is that right? I do. I do. Yes, I do. Mostly remote sessions. So I'm guiding them through the whole process and they are doing the tapping on themselves. And you said earlier, you're also teaching people so that they can do this on their own. Yeah. So the technique is very easy to learn. Once you've done uh, several rounds, it, you just remember the sequence and the pattern and you can do that on your own, whether you want to just tap silently or whether you want to say certain statements out loud as you tap. Um, but it's, it's super easy to learn and, and to do on your own. So, so that was actually a question I was going to ask you is that um, the, the relationship between the mantras or affirmations and the tapping, but you're saying it, it, you don't necessarily have to say anything. Yeah. Sometimes, especially maybe your emotions are just so big and you are so overwhelmed that you can't even find the right words and trying to put it to words is going to just cause you more stress and anxiety. Just be with those feelings and go through the tapping sequence and one of the things that I help also teach my clients is how to identify certain feelings in the body. I remember, and if if you are an analytical, logical, high achieving person, there's a good chance you might be very disconnected from that. We are so used to being in our heads um, that there can be an extreme mind body disconnect, right? I remember the first time a therapist asked me, well, where do you feel that emotion in your body? And I just kind of looked at her like, 
I don't know. Like my emotions what? are in my head. What are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? And so really you can just focus on your breath. And, and once you learn how to identify where those feelings are, uh, the words aren't as important, but of course, as you know, words are so powerful. And especially when you're tapping in a session with a practitioner, to have someone witnessing and making those statements can be so affirming. Yeah. Um, sometimes the practitioner might say something that you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that. Or how did you know that? Right. Um, and we sometimes we need the guidance just to to give ourselves permission to express ourselves and give okay. ourselves permission. Like you said, when someone said, you know, where are you feeling that in the body? You know, uh, who whoever thinks about that, right? But we know that our trauma does live in our body, our history, our experiences. You know, we're walking around with a lot of stuff. We, we're carrying around a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we just have to drop the bag. <laughs> So yes. can we talk a little bit more about energy? Um, because I, I I think that, so there's positive energy and there's negative energy or is there just energy? I personally believe that, that it's just energy and it's either in alignment with you or it's out of alignment. And that's what determines what feels good or bad. And that's where the positive negative. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> but this has been so good. I have a couple more questions. Okay. So as we wind up our conversation uh, today, Tracy, what is one thing that you would really like the listener to take away from, from everything that you've shared? And I'm sure you've piqued a lot of interest in, in our audience, but if there was one thing you'd like them to, to take with them, you know, today, what would it be? Uh, just how powerful they are. And how much power they have to change their lives and really take back their control. And, uh, you know, it's, you've, you've talked in past episodes about the connection between our brain and our body. Mm. And when you think about the fact that in terms of the communications between our brain and body, 80% goes from the body to the brain, only about 20% goes from the brain down to the body. And likewise, in terms of our thoughts, all, you know, about 90% of our brain activity is subconscious rather than conscious. And so I would say if you've been experiencing burnout, if you're in a place where you feel stuck and you're struggling and you haven't tried some of these um, somatic techniques such as EFT, I first want to commend you because you have basically been doing battle with about 10% of the resources available to you. Yeah. And I just want to invite you to consider how much better your life could be, how much more you could accomplish, how much easier it could be if you were able to access that that other 90% or 80%. And we're so used to kind of thinking about cognitive strategies to our, to reduce our stress, but actually if we kind of flip it and focus on the body first, um, it can be the most amazing, efficient uh, hack, if you will, the shortcut. And I know if you're anything like me, if you're a, a type A perfectionist, overachiever, you know, recovering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that idea of, of getting a, a quick solution, something that's efficient is, um, it can be a game changer. Yeah. And let's, let's get clear too, as much as it's a solution, it could also be something that is just part of a healthy practice. It could be more preventative, right? We don't need to use this when we hit the end of our rope. If we were to get into um, the practice of emotional freedom techniques, um, how, how much clearer would we be? How much less stress would we feel? How much more imbalance or flow could we create for ourselves, right? Yes, that's an amazing point. It's not only an amazing preventative tool before we hit that uh, rock bottom breaking point, but it's also just a great tool for peak performance. Right. Um, I find it super helpful for brainstorming because it calms the certain you know, parts of our brain that might be um, sort of over overdoing. 
and, and allows us to act, uh, access our, our subconscious and the more creative parts of us. So, so the next time, listen, uh, next time I have a meeting, I'm going to tell my team, okay, everybody, let's just clear some, some <laughs> of that energy. And maybe we start tapping and working through some of that first. Right. So you heard it here first. If my people are listening, <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, I think it's important for us to embrace some of these, I, I guess we could call them alternative solutions or alternative techniques, um, because we do get very stuck in a pattern of thinking and doing. And, and if we could approach this new year with some different ways of, of doing things, you know, how we get different results, right? Because that's really the key. What do we want to do more of and, and move forward in this new year? Exactly. Exactly. So Tracy, if someone would like to learn more about you and the work that you do or how you work with clients, where can they find you? So my website is tapoutburnout.com. I'm also on LinkedIn, Instagram, um, Tracy Inscore. You can find me or as tapoutburnout. And I do offer uh, free burnout strategy sessions just oh, to see for a good fit and and um, talk about some of the issues you might be facing and and how I can support you. And I know um, I wanted to do something special just for your listeners, Anna. So I think you have um, a link that you'll you'll provide. But I'd like to offer my regular sixty minute or my sorry my ninety minute session at my sixty minute rate. So oh, um, that'll great. be good available just for your listeners. So that is awesome. Yeah. So we'll have all of that and the links to that in the show notes. And I think Tracy, I'm going to uh, want to schedule some time with you and um, work with you a little bit myself, because I know firsthand um, what EFT can do. And I also have um, some certifications in emotional integration work. So I believe in the work that you do and it is just so important. And um I trust that that someone listening here today is inspired to to really check it out and not to be intimidated by it and um, to really give themselves a, the opportunity, you know, to connect mind and body. And um, that's really what it is. It's really bringing the energy and connection together uh, and and opening up, as you said, using the meridians to open ourselves up as much as it is to release some stuff we've probably been carrying around. <laughs> Yes, yes. I'd, I'd love to work with you, Anna, and any of your listeners. And just, yes, thank you so much for allowing me to, sh to share this. All right, great. Well, maybe we'll share that in a future episode or do a video of, of us working together so we can help some other people see it and feel inspired. So Tracy, thanks again for joining me. It was really great to talk with you and I appreciate you and, and definitely appreciate you offering um our listeners that that special bonus. So I hope people take advantage of that. And um, I, I trust that, you know, people got what they needed today. So thank you again. And thank all of you for listening. And we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you.